Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. That might help. Uh, please be seated. Good morning. So the identity of Jesus is a recurring theme throughout the Gospels. He gets called a prophet. He gets called Elijah, John the Baptist, Moses. Um, he takes on the nickname of the Good Shepherd. But by far the strangest identity of Jesus is when he calls himself bread. Don't get me wrong, I love carbs as much as the next guy, but maybe Jesus is taking the saying, you are what you eat, a bit too far. All joking aside, this metaphor holds real deep meaning when we break it down. Because we really are what we eat in a physical sense. Or maybe more technically, what you eat becomes you. We do not physically become the things we eat, just as I am not a giant can of Diet Coke or a pizza, but the things I ingest become a part of me at a microscopic level. When we consume food, our stomach breaks it down and takes in many of the useful building blocks that it contains to fuel our bodies. Our body needs all kinds of nutrients like uh, calcium, iron, potassium, sodium, protein, and more. We eat the food, and these things are taken in to become a part of the complex organism that is the human body. The food is broken down into nutrients and digested for energy for the body. And the energy we take in from our food to function is measured in the calorie. One calorie is the measurement of energy it takes to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius. So calories equal heat. That's important, and we're going to come back to that a little later. The calories and the nutrients from our food literally become part of us, which is really neat and maybe more than a little nerdy of me. But what does it have to do with the scripture reading today and for our life as Christians? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus, like bread, becomes part of us when we let him in. In communion, we take in the essence of Christ, and like the nutrients in our lunch power our bodies, he powers our spirit. Energy provided by food propels our bodies, it fuels our muscles and allows us to function, and similarly, the energy we get from Jesus is the fuel of our spirits. 
like calories releasing heat, Jesus releases the warmth in our hearts to become more than what we were. Jesus becomes part of us so that we might be more like him. This is why one of my favorite variations of our invitation to communion is behold what you are with the response, may we become what we receive. It is through this becoming one with Christ that we can go out knowing that we have taken Jesus into ourselves and recognizing that our hearts and souls are being fused with the love and grace of God. We can be truly nourished and propelled into a deeper state of communion with God and with each other. Jesus says here to receive this gift, you have to come to him and believe. We have to show up if we want nourishment. We have to believe if we want to have our thirst quenched. And I don't think believing here is that intellectual kind of belief where you say, oh yeah, God exists, I know that. Because believing is not knowing. For example, I know myself and I believe in myself are two very different statements. Knowing is intellectual. There's a journey of discovering facts about myself that can be discovered. When I say I believe in myself, I'm saying that I can do it or I am worthy. It is a statement beyond knowing because belief is lived into. Knowledge might feed some of our beliefs, but belief is emotional. And it is when I believe in myself, I can live without fear or failure. Similarly, when we believe in Jesus, we don't simply know that he exists. Instead, we are invited to live into the life and truth of Jesus and to put our whole heart and soul in this truth. It's in this living into Jesus, this belief in him, that enables us to come to him for nourishment. Then in coming to him, we are finally able to put down that baggage which weighs us down. St. Paul says to put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Because we believe in Jesus, we lean into that forgiveness and grace that he provides us. It's in loving God fully with our whole heart that our eyes and hearts are opened up to the people around us. Because when we see the depth of love that God has for us, we can start to imagine the depth of love of God for those around us. I know many of the ways I am imperfect, and yet when I believe that God loves me anyways, I can start to see that despite their imperfections, all the people around me are beautiful in the eyes of God. And that is nourishment. That is the type of food that leaves your soul and heart feeling full. That is the type of drink that can quench our loneliness and isolation. It is when we are connected to God that we, that we then become connected to each other. It allows us to put aside our differences and come together as one in Christ. Imagine for a moment that all humankind perfectly lived into this communion, casting off the differences that create division and acknowledging our oneness. What might the world look like? Would we be able to eradicate poverty, famine, and war? And I know that we cannot live this perfectly. We fail, we stumble, we turn away. We as humans have shown time and time again that we tend to fall into sin, denying our oneness with God and through God with each other. But God calls us back, back to the communion rail 
elbow to elbow with our neighbors, to be refreshed in our oneness, to be fed in connection with our creator. As Episcopalians, we have the chance every week to feed on the reminder that we are all one in Jesus. And in that reminder, as we take God into ourselves, our hearts and bodies and souls, we can begin to move towards that perfect communion with each other, one step at a time. Amen.